What's up, Mushroom Fam? It's Gary with Fresh from the Farm Fungi. Today, I'm going to talk about slide prep or slide preparation. So there's a few different techniques to prepare glass slides for the compound microscope. Depending on the sample or what you're trying to achieve, you, you'd want to use one of these various processes to prepare the slide. So I'm going to go through a few different samples here. I've got this lion's mane spore print. So I'm going to do a wet slide prep with that one. And then I've got some penicillium mold. So I will do a fixed slide or a heat fixed slide. And that's why I have this alcohol burner here. Because once you transfer the mold onto the slide, you can use the alcohol to flame it. And that way, it's kind of stuck to the slide so I can use the oil immersion. So I have some, some oil for my oil immersion lens. And then on the next two dishes, I've got some lion's mane mushroom and an unknown mushroom here that I'm going to be using bromothymol blue and scotch tape prep so that we can search for clamp connections, or I just want to look at this lion's mane mycelium to see what that looks like when, it, when it's stained. A few more things to take note of. After you prepare your slides, they make these little plastic slips so you can store your slides in. Uh, we do have some spore prints that I sell on Etsy using these little slide covers. Another thing to note is the difference between concave slides. So these are really nice for wet prep. So the concave slides have a little concave disc in the middle and that will retain water. So I'm going to use this one for my lion mane spore. For the rest of the three, I just have regular flat glass slides. So they're just slides that are completely flat. And then I also have cover slips, which that's important when you're doing your wet slide prep uh, to cover that concave so that your objective lens doesn't hit that water. It's not the end of the world, but it just makes it dirty and then you have to clean it. All right, so for the first slide, I'm going to prepare a wet slide with this lion's mane spore print. So I will flip the camera around and go through my procedure for that, and then we'll take a look under the microscope. All right, so I've got my sterile water here that I'm just going to place on top of these spores just to loosen them up off the surface. And then I've got my plastic pipetter that I'm just going to try to peel some of these spores right off the surface of the spore print. And then I'm going to place this right in the center of that concave. And then I'm going to use this cover slip and carefully carefully at an angle you want to put just one slip Whoop. Okay, then carefully at an angle, you're going to want to place one edge down so it spreads out and then let that side drop down so you don't get any air pockets. Okay, so I have my lion's mane spores loaded up on my glass slide and the cover slips on there. So I'm going to go ahead and place it on the scope. Let's... uh. Let's check out what we have here. So I'm going to load up the camera and I'll start with the coarse adjustment. 
Oh man, and we are getting some spores. So there are plenty of lion's mane spores on this slide. And it's really cool to scan like a wider range with the uh, 4X. So it's 40 times magnified because the ocular is a 10X. But if we want to get a deeper dive into this, I'm going to rotate it around. And since it's already dialed in with the 4X, the 10X, you should only have to use the fine adjustment. Okay, so we've got some really cool spores. You can notice there's some artifacts mixed in, which is probably just lysed spores or dried up spores from when I made the spore print. Um, these ones are pretty clear looking. I would say maybe 10 microns or 20, but that's a rough estimate. So that is some lion's mane spores. And I can go a step further and do my 40X. And wow, we really get some, some cool resolution here. So it looks like there are some viable spores on that print. And if you want to watch the video that I made about isolating a single spore using a pipette tip, um, this is a perfect stage to grab your pipette tip, a blank Petri dish, and then you can collect haploid spores uh, manually doing that. It's a little bit tricky. It's a very delicate procedure, but definitely check that video out at the end if you're interested in breeding. All right, so now I'm going to move on to a fixed slide next. So we have this penicillium and a flat slide. And essentially, I'm just going to be scraping up some of that mold and placing it on this. And then I'll start up the burner so that as that water evaporates, it will fix to the slide and we can check it out with the oil immersion. Okay, so I'm just gonna put a little bit of water on the surface of this slide so I have some liquid to work with. And then I'm going to use my loop to dig into this colony. Hopefully we get some cool looking cells. And then I'll just spread this out yeah, you can see some of that mold floating around. Um, if you spread it out a lot, it will tend to evaporate pretty quickly. All right, guys. So now that I have my slide, I'm just going to use the heat from this alcohol lamp to evaporate that moisture off the surface. And they do make hot pads for this, which, you know, probably works a lot better than what I'm doing now, but this is the old school method. So I try to just fix some of those cells on the surface without burning the bottom. And the purpose of this is that when you put your oil on, you don't want those cells to slide around and then you can save this sample for later. All right, so if you can look closely, I'll cap this off. There's a slight perimeter around where those cells were. So I'm gonna shoot for that region. I can flip the camera around to show you guys what I'm talking about. And I did burn it a little bit, which isn't ideal. So you can see there's a little periphery right there. I'm going to shoot for this region just because it dried out the best. But let's take a look under the scope. All right. So we've got that prep slide. And I'm just going to go ahead and add some oil on that section that I showed. All right. So I've got some cells in focus on here. And... It 
it looks like they have some pretty good structure. Um, we're seeing lots of the spores and some fragmented cells from the mold. So I think I could have done a better job getting some definitely getting some air bubbles but it's really cool to see the clumps of different spores and possibly some some bacteria um, it, in order to do more identification I need to get more stains so we'll just go ahead and do the scotch tape procedure with the lion's mane and the unknown mycelium. So I'm just going to put a drop of the bromothymal blue onto the slide. And then we're going to do, I'll do both of them actually. So we're just doing a drop of bromothymal blue to highlight the mycelium. And now we're just going to take our tape make sure that you don't get any hair on it and then you can just gently sweep it across so you get a nice little fragment and then I'll try to do a better job of keeping the air bubbles out this time good one now this stain is pretty unique because if it's acidic then it will turn yellow but if it's a base it stays blue but essentially it just highlights the perimeter of the mycelium so I'll do the same thing with the unknown. And hopefully we can find some clamp connections. So I'm just grazing it across the dish. I've got some decent mycelium there. And then I'm carefully laying this down and avoiding air bubbles. So that one was all right. So there's going to be some good sections in there. Okay, now I'll switch over to the computer. And we'll do some scanning. So first, we'll do the lion's mane, and I'll start it at four. So we can dial in this mycelium. All right, we got some really cool shots of the lion's mane mycelium. Now I'll switch it up to ten X magnification. And you can see those overlays. Now I'll turn it up. We're gonna get lucky. Oh yeah. All right, so I found my first clamp connection within five seconds, which is pretty rare. But you can see the uh, the little loop between the cell walls 
I'll put it on my pointer. So that right there is verification that those two hyphae had mated and they're exchanging DNA. So let's see if we can find a clamp connection on the next sample. So I'm going to back off. And let's see if we can just see it from afar, which is pretty hard. So you're going to want to go to 40x or 400 magnification to see the clamp connections. All right, so we're going to look at our unknown sample. And right off the bat, the mycelium looks much more concentrated than the lion's mane sample. But it looks like the stain took a lot better. But we're going to go ahead and find a more sparse region to look for some clamp connections. All right, now we're going to switch over to our 40x objective and zoom in with our fine focus. And there we go. It looks like we've got our clamp connection right there. It looks a little different than the lion's mane mycelium, which had two hyphae. And this one is just a single strand of hyphae with a cell wall in between. So you can see right there, we've got our little loop, which allows for the flow of genetic information from one cell to the next, kind of like a highway. And then there's a cell wall right in between. So it's a little loop that the nuclei can run from cell to cell. I'll have to do some more investigation, particularly with the spores, to figure out what this mushroom mycelium is. But we found our clamp connection. All right. I hope you enjoyed that video on slide preparation. Give us a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're looking forward to more mycology videos like these. If you are looking for fresh and reliable cultures, check out our Etsy shop, Fresh Fungi. Stay tuned. We're going to be doing more microscopy videos and some breeding videos and uh, some updates with the building as that progresses. All right. Until next time, much love.